This is the story of how I literally managed to play Fall Guys on my toaster. So the toaster is the input device. You can use all of its buttons and sliders. You can play pretty much whatever game you want on it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how it was built. And we're gonna play some games, of course. We're still in this. <laughs> My plan was very simple. I bought a toaster. I bought a microcontroller. The microcontroller will pretend it's a gamepad. It will also be connected to the buttons of the toaster. We'll add a simple display to it. And all of that will simply connect to my desktop PC. Profit. The only problem was... I didn't know how to do any of that. Luckily, I found three perfectly fine get help from dad jokers in the trash. And the Teensy 4.0 microcontroller came with this little card here, including a link on how to get started. A few moments of research later, I plugged it in and observed the blinking program that's on the Teensy by default. And just shortly after, managed to write my own custom blinking pattern. Wow, so exciting. I know, but you have to walk before you can run. I also had a closer look at the beautiful toaster I ordered. It has three buttons, one knob for the heat, a slider on the left side, and a slider on the right side. Side. Opening up toasters is yet another thing that's usually not part of my job description as an indie developer, so please excuse me if I'm a little clumsy with that. Uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, I could use my first get help from dad joker on this, but nah, not yet. It was jammed and I just couldn't get it open. Okay, this is where it should get interesting because this is some example code for a keyboard. What's so cool about Teensy microcontrollers is that you can very easily connect them as all kinds of different devices. You just select keyboard from a drop down menu and ta da, the microcontroller is a keyboard now. Hast du gerade eine Sekunde? So I made a keyboard that keeps printing ha 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 and try to prank my dad with it. Look, this is not a prank channel. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Then I wrote a USB mouse that keeps jittering the mouse around. My mouse is moving. Which turned out to be a horrible mistake because the microcontroller was officially a USB mouse now. And the only way to get a new program on it was to press this button on the screen. So I guess at least I managed to prank myself. I assume there are other solutions, but I didn't know any. I can't click the button. At least I eventually managed to make some progress on the toaster side of things. Yes! <laughs> Here's the spring that makes this beautiful sound and the magnet that holds your toast down. A lot of things were a little more loose than I expected. I cut all of the main cables because I didn't think it would be safe for anybody to actually plug this in after I tampered with it anyway. I also found a little circuit board on the opposite side of these buttons. Turns out there are actually six buttons underneath, which for our case is very good because that means depending on which side of the button you press on, we'll be able to simulate a different button press. And then we also have this little knob here, which used to go in here. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> No, please make it stop. <laughs> oh no. Yes! Yes, I got it! That meant I could finally start working on my first actual gamepad script. And as I didn't have anything connected to the microcontroller yet, I just made it press the jump button in regular intervals. Boing, boing, boing. Boing. I used one get help from Dad Joker so he could teach me soldering because I had never done that before. First thing we did was extending the ground pin a little bit because we'll have to connect a lot of things to the ground pin and this will allow us to do that. For the sake of testing I connected one button from the basement as well as one sliding potentiometer. To my surprise no complicated electronics were needed at all. You just have to connect everything to the correct pin and that's it. The question is can I actually play like this? <laughs> <laughs> yes! So my first buttons were connected and working. I have to admit that playing with the sliding potentiometer was a little more tricky than expected, but yeah, that's kind of the point. I'll try it like this. Yes! <laughs> the rest of the family had to suffer through it as well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is my upcoming indie game, Will You Snail, by the way. So if you want to add it to your wishlist on Steam, I would be super grateful. You are a snail, and I am a god capable of predicting every move. Once again I was stuck because I didn't know how to connect the circuit board to the microcontroller. So I used my second joker and my dad suggested to scratch through the circuits on the back to disconnect the buttons from all of the other electronics we don't need. And with that step done I was finally ready to connect everything to the Teensy.
Unfortunately, there was one minor complication during the process where I messed up these contacts by connecting them. As you can see here, I was clearly too inexperienced and clumsy to fix it myself, so I had to spend my second joker on getting it fixed. And with that, I had seven buttons and three potentiometers connected. Very nice. Next up, I wrote a quick and simple test program in Game Maker that just shows which buttons on the gamepad are currently pressed. When I press A, bottom one lights up. When I press B, one on the right. Okay. That means we have our testing software done. I insulated most of the contacts really quick to make sure they don't touch anything they're not supposed to. And then coded the remaining gamepad inputs for the TNZ using the new tool I just made for testing. When I press this one, the correct button on the gamepad lights up. That is working pretty well. I have to say, that one is working pretty, pretty well. Unfortunately, the rotary potentiometer that was in the toaster didn't seem to work with the TNZ. It jumps when I move over the middle, it jumps. If I'm Even though I'm rotating it slowly, it's still... So unfortunately I had to spend my last and final joker on figuring out a solution which eventually ended up being just using a different potentiometer instead. And with that the by far most difficult part of the toaster build began getting all of the electronics into the toaster. I had absolutely no clue how to handle the sliders on the sides so I had to spend my very last joker on that. Here you can see the first potentiometer working, there it is. We just used a bent wire to connect it to the toaster. And as you can see it's not going all the way down, but we can fix that in code later. This is the construction on the other side. And then I strategically spent my last joker to get the display in. And I know what you're thinking. Jonas, be careful, you only have two jokers remaining. Yeah, yeah don't worry, I got this. So we used a bunch of hot glue to glue the display into place, which worked just fine. The next step of getting the circuit board back in did not work just fine because our new potentiometer was too big and didn't fit into the hole. We tried our best to make it fit and it sort of did. This is the Teensy microcontroller inside of a shrinkable tube just to make sure it's properly insulated and doesn't touch anything. Drilling a new hole for all of the cables. And then we added another hole on the back side of the toaster to make sure you can still reach the reset button of the TNZ. And with that we were ready to close it up and we're praying that we would never have to open it back up again. But you already know it, something obviously had to go wrong. Everything was kinda jammed, the knob didn't rotate properly, the cables got caught up in the sliders. But instead of opening it up the normal way, we decided to cut a little hole into the ground and try to fix it that way. Still feels a little clunky, but as long as it works, everything's fine. So this is our final product, we have two sliders, the right one is working flawlessly, all of these six buttons are connected, the knob is a little hard to rotate but it works. On the back we have the cables as well as the reset button for the TNZ. On the inside we have an additional secret button and we also made sure you can reach the on off switch of the display. It even has a touch screen, I don't know if it gets any better than that. <laughs> For Trackmania I decided to use the knob for steering and the left slider for accelerating. Works pretty well actually. <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously I can rebind these inputs any way I want. Using the slider on the right also felt pretty funny for example. <gasps> no, I got this. Unfortunately the problems didn't quite end there because Fall Guys did not want to recognize my custom gamepad at all. Rebinding didn't work either so a solution had to be found. Luckily as we already know the Teensy can also pretend to be a mouse or a keyboard. So guess what I did? Play! So now I should be able to play with these buttons right here. I should be able to go forwards and backwards with this. Actually made it so I could turn the camera with these two up here. Our friend Danny recently made a video where he turned two bananas into a gamepad. He also made a racing game called Jelly Drift that is meant to be played with a banana. Even though I was already planning this video when Danny's video came out, I feel like we have to pay some respect to the original. Luckily we have, have touch. Ah! It's jammed! No! <laughs> it's so drifty. I shouldn't go too fast. No! I haven't implemented a way to go backwards yet. I think I have a newfound appreciation for the simplicity of a classical gamepad now. Please make it now! <laughs> this feels so dumb. I might be able to make it. Oh, I made it! Oh my god, I made it! 
Oh my god, I made it! First, you turn me into a toaster, then into a chocolate. What's next? Um, uh, nothing. Bye. I hate you so 